What do you need to be stronger, better, smarter, faster, and more successful? Annihilate, crush, destroy. Get out of it. Just sleep faster. I don't want to relax. I dominated 3 o'clock in the morning. And stay hard. Nope. What you really need is more sleep. And I'll prove it to you because I guarantee you, right now, you're underestimating the importance of sleep by a lot. In this video, I'll show you why sleep is key to every part of mental and physical performance and exactly what you need to do to fall asleep easily and wake up feeling fresh and ready to take on the day. Not just sometimes, but every single day. Sleep is a force multiplier for everything in your life, which means bad sleep makes all the bad things in your life worse, while good sleep makes all the good things in your life better. For example, did you know that in your body, the highest levels of growth hormone and muscle protein synthesis happen at night, which means that quality sleep leads to more muscle growth. And a lot of memory consolidation and learning happens in your brain during sleep which means that getting enough of it is a key factor for cognitive performance. A regular sleep schedule is also a requirement for a well-functioning metabolism, which is why people who sleep less have higher rates of obesity and also have more metabolic disorders such as type 2 diabetes. Countless studies also show how poor sleep is closely linked to mental health issues such as anxiety and depression and chronic stress. This is what everyone underestimates about sleep. Not sleeping enough doesn't just make you tired. It also makes you weak, fat, dumb, sick, and sad. And on top of all that, there's one more reason we need to be talking about this. Late nights are the dopamine addict's greatest weakness. You know what I'm talking about. You tell yourself that you want to limit your phone time. You want to stop doom scrolling so much. You want to take better care of your health. But then what happens when it's late at night, you lie in bed and you can't fall asleep? The phone comes out. The doom scrolling comes back. The lube and tissues come out and you go back to that site you promised yourself you wouldn't go back to. And so you end your day doubling down on your worst habits and then of course the next day you feel awful. There's a very simple conclusion I came to from all the studies I read. If you care at all about your performance and your health, you have to make sleep a priority. And that's really bad news because I suck at sleeping. I always struggled to fall asleep, even when I was a little kid. I actually thought it was normal to toss and turn for several hours before you could finally fall asleep. And then of course, I always felt tired in the morning. This was my life. I never wanted to get up in the morning because I was tired because I didn't get enough sleep. And I didn't want to go to bed at night because I didn't want to have that frustrating experience of tossing and turning and not being able to fall asleep. And this problem followed me into adulthood. It was always difficult for me to sleep and I never got enough of it. And at some point I realized I have to fix this. To understand sleep, I read all of these books plus dozens of research articles on the topic. And over the years, I've done dozens of experiments on myself to try all kinds of different factors for improving my own sleep. I've also been wearing an aura ring at night for years now so that I have some objective measures of what works and what doesn't. In all of this, I learned that there are loads of things you can do to optimize your sleep and most of them don't matter. Hard mattresses, soft mattresses, small or large pillows, memory foam toppers, adjusting your bedroom temperature, napping, biphasic sleep, supplements, herbal teas, white noise, pink noise, binaural beats, earplugs. The list of sleep hacks you can find online and in books is endless. And yes, many of these things do make some difference to your sleep quality. But here's why I say that none of them really matter. Each of these sleep hacks makes a small difference at best. But then if you add them all up, that makes a big difference, right? Well, not really, because there are two factors that make so much of a difference that you might as well not bother with any of this other stuff. So then what are these two hugely important factors? Light is the number one most important factor for your sleep quality. Nothing else comes close. And when I say light or light exposure, what I literally mean is light hitting your eyeballs primarily. There are specialized receptors in your eyes that are fine-tuned to detect light temperature and brightness. And these receptors regulate your body's internal clock. And it turns out this explains almost everything about why modern humans don't sleep well. Here's the prehistoric experience that your body was designed for. You wake up in the morning and your eyes detect warm, low-angle light from the sun that is slowly rising over the horizon. This tells your body it's morning, time to wake up, and it sets off a whole cascade of hormonal and internal systems that make you switch from sleep mode to wake mode. 
Now it's time to get active and go about your daily business of gathering and hunting and building and so on. As the day progresses, your eyes detect bright midday sun, which in terms of light temperature is more towards the cold end of the spectrum. And then towards the evening, your eyes once again detect warmer, low angle light from the sun setting. This sequence of bright midday light followed by low angle, warmer light as the sun sets is the signal that tells your body to start winding down. And then finally, after sunset, you might spend another couple of hours in a mostly dark environment illuminated only by dim, warm firelight. And this is the signal for your body to switch into sleep mode. Now here's what is actually happening in the modern world. You wake up and you immediately get a blast of artificial blue light straight into your eyeballs from your phone screen. Then you spend most of your time indoors where you're not getting natural sunlight, but you are being bathed in artificial light from overhead lamps and screens. And then as it gets dark outside, you're still constantly seeing light from street lamps, from headlights, from passing cars, from billboards, and of course from screens, which you keep looking at until late into the night. Now, at the risk of stating the obvious, Screens are bright, but the sun is much brighter. And this is important to understand because all of this artificial light exposure messes with our system in two different ways. During midday, being indoors and looking at screens gives you much less light than your body would expect compared to sunlight outside. But during the morning and during the evening and night, all this light coming from screens is much too bright compared to what your body is naturally expecting. In short, you're getting all the wrong light signals at all the wrong times. Your brain and body are just not getting those natural wake up and go to sleep signals, which means your internal clock is constantly confused, which means you don't sleep well. Now I could keep showing you evidence about how important light exposure is for sleep until the cows come home. But let's just cut straight to the chase. Fixing your light exposure is the single most impactful thing you can do to fix your sleep. So here's exactly how to do it. Step one, see sunlight in the morning if at all possible. Here's how I do it. I go for a walk outside shortly after sunrise. I usually also go to the park where I will do my morning exercise and there I get sunlight in my eyes as well as on my skin. And I'm giving my body that it's morning time to wake up signal. And I do this before looking at any screens. Step two, reduce blue light in the evening. I see so many people with their phone screens on full blast all the time, even in the evening. Turn that down. Like literally take the two seconds to turn down the brightness when it's darker outside and over time your phone will adjust to your preferred brightness setting, which is not nuclear artificial light blast in my eyeballs at all times, please. Also turn on that night shift mode that removes some of the blue light and go into your settings and make sure that this thing turns on automatically and relatively early in the evening. And while night shift mode does help because it reduces blue light, it's also rather overrated. By itself, it really doesn't do enough. So here's what I do in addition. Once it gets dark outside, I try to avoid screens as much as possible and I wear these blue light blocking glasses. Now make sure you get the ones that really block all blue light and have a dark red tint. Not the ones with a yellow or orangey tint and certainly not the ones that are transparent but are still supposed to block some blue light. And yeah, this does make you look like a dork but it's totally worth it. And step three, live in the dark at night. Here's how I do it. Once it gets dark outside, I don't use any overhead lights in my apartment. I use warm, dim lights and indirect lighting only. I also avoid screens altogether for 90 minutes to two hours before my bedtime. This is a great time to do some reading, to write and contemplate my day, to do a bit of stretching or meditation, or also to just hang out with friends and have long conversations. I'm basically creating a modern day replica of late night caveman activities, and honestly, it's great. So that's light exposure, but what's the second hugely important factor for your sleep quality? It is simply learning how to sleep. Because yes, that is something that you have to learn and that most of us have unlearned and forgotten. The good news is when you do it right, learning how to fall asleep is actually easy and even enjoyable. And I'll teach you how to do it right now. Step one, get into bed and get into your comfortable sleeping position. Now for most people, the optimal sleeping position is lying on your non-dominant side. But the thing is you actually already know what your comfortable sleeping position is. And that means no tossing and turning. When you can't fall asleep, the solution isn't to change positions and refluff your pillow and all that because you actually already know what position you end up sleeping in. So just get into that position and stay there. Step two, breathe slowly and steadily. 
So as you lie there, focus on long, slow breaths and focus on extending the exhale without forcing it. This should never feel uncomfortable. It's just a gentle focus on deep, slow breathing and slow exhaling. This type of breathing regulates your nervous system and helps you get into sleep mode. Step three, focus on relaxation. On every exhale, feel your body relax. Allow yourself to let go on every exhale. Feel yourself getting heavier and sinking into the mattress. And if you have a busy mind and you tend to easily get distracted, you can think the word relax in your mind on every exhale. And then the fourth and final step is really key, but this might take some practice. Step four, commit to sleep and enjoy it. Right now, you probably suck at sleeping, just like I did for most of my life. So when you try what I'm describing here, you might feel antsy and nervous and frustrated when it doesn't immediately work. You'll feel the impulse to change positions. You might have all kinds of ruminating thoughts pop into your mind. You worry about tomorrow, or you remember that thing someone told you and wish you had had a better comeback for, or just random ideas pop into your mind. And you'll have thoughts like, this isn't working, and I should check my phone, and I should find out what time it is now so I can do mental math about how many hours I have left to sleep, and then be all stressed about not getting enough sleep based on the math I just did. But these are all just signs you're bad at sleeping. You're out of practice, you're probably addicted to your phone, and your body is trying to to get you to do all kinds of things that are not sleeping. So here's what you do. You commit to sleeping. You give yourself no other options. You won't check your phone, you won't change positions, and you won't spend hours following various random trains of thought in your mind. Once you get into bed, there's one of two things that you're going to do. You're either going to relax and fall asleep, or you're going to lie here in your comfortable bed and enjoy the feelings of relaxation. Because get this, there's nothing to be stressed about here. Lying in bed relaxing is actually super enjoyable. It's comfortable and pleasant to be in bed. And it's such a relief that it's nighttime because there are no expectations, no obligations, nowhere you have to be right now. So even if you can't fall asleep, it's actually super nice to be here and just have time for yourself and just relax. So no matter what happens, just focus on the process, keep relaxing and enjoy the time you have. The first few nights you do this, you might struggle a bit with this process and might take you some time to fall asleep like this just because it's so different from what you've been doing up until now. And that's especially true if what you usually do is give in to your dopamine addiction. But if you keep practicing this very soon, your body will get used to it and you'll start falling asleep almost instantly. And because you're committed to sleep and relaxation and because you fall asleep more reliably, you also sleep deeper and better. That's exactly what happened to me. I went from being a lifetime bad sleeper to now falling asleep easily and sleeping well consistently. And after everything I read about sleep and all of the different hacks I tried to improve my sleep, it's really these two things that I always come back to. And when, for example, international travel throws off my sleep schedule, it's these two things that I focus on to get back on track. If I can do it, so can you. Except you can skip past all of the experimentation I did to find out all the things that don't work. So now you know exactly what to do to make sleep easy, refreshing, and enjoyable. And this will also help you avoid falling into those late night dopamine traps from now on. So give it a try and let me know how it goes for you. If you appreciate the kind of content I'm creating and you want to help me get it out to more people, go ahead and leave a like and a comment for the algorithm. It really helps.